Where's my belly button? I gave up. I can't find it. I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about some of the changes that I have personally experienced with my body. I love videos like this from other people who have already had babies. I started kind of watching these kind of like when Nick and I started trying and I just found it super interesting to see like how people's bodies change. And obviously I watch, I like, oh, I gotta loosen my sweatpants. Yeah, you thought I was like real fancy and comfy. At, well, I am comfy on the bottom too, but like you thought I was real kind of fancy and cute and like with it on top. And I literally have like paint stained, like purple. Oh, these gotta go, man. I'm like looking at these, I'm like, <laughs> no one's gonna get laid in these, okay? Anyways, I found it really interesting to look at other people's um, changes that they've gone through with their body. So I kind of wanted to do one like this is 33 weeks. Here's what I've experienced so far. And then it'll be interesting to do one maybe closer to my due date uh, and then also postpartum. <sighs> Forgive me, I she is sitting so high and I run out of breath very easily. So I'm gonna kind of go through my little list here and maybe some of you can relate to some of them and maybe some of you can't, or maybe some of you have uh, kind of seen some changes with your body either currently or in a previous pregnancy that I haven't, and I would love to hear about it. So these are gonna be kind of in chronological order as I started to notice them. So I will do that, but aside from obviously these are all the things aside from a growing belly that I'm ex experiencing physically. So I've got a sheet that I'm gonna be reading because I didn't wanna forget anything and I tend to just trail off and talk for a really long time. Sometimes about nothing. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to breathe. <sighs> Sitting forward is like the most comfortable, except I can't breathe. So one of the first things that I noticed when I became pregnant was veins on my boobs and I don't know if you can see them on camera but this boob has gotten the most veins on it and I think it'll be my champ and I think this one's gonna lag a little bit with breastfeeding so veins were the first thing that I noticed when I got pregnant secondly um I was curious if I was going to get stretch marks uh so I asked my mom if she got any stretch marks while she was pregnant because typically I've heard that this is genetic so if your mom had a lot of stretch marks then typically you will as well so I asked her and she said no so I was like hallelujah um so hopefully I was hoping I didn't get any stretch marks well maybe you know maybe you don't know I've had two boob jobs in the last uh year and a half I was not happy with my first boob job. I got it redone and a little bit larger. So my body basically got my last boob job on April 1st of last year. And then I got pregnant right away basically. So my body was going from having like a small B uh, about a year and a half ago to a full D. Um, so I think the only reason I have stretch marks on my boobs, I just have a few under here and I swear some days they're lighter and sometimes they look like they're completely gone. But I do put oil on those in my belly and my lower back every single day, multiple times a day. But um, I have a feeling I wouldn't have any stretch marks had I not gotten the boob job done. Oh my gosh, I can't breathe. Nick put this sticker on my water bottle and he just thinks it's like ridiculously hilarious. Like he thinks I look like such a nerd walking around with a water bottle that says wild. And I do. So good job, Nick. Another thing that set in pretty quickly was stretching um, and itching. So my skin started to stretch on my stomach and my boobs and became very itchy. And then shortly after my stomach started itching and my boobs started itching, my lower back area, like where my sacrum is, started itching as well. And I've been using a few different types of oils on those areas. Like I said, I do it like twice a day to try and keep the itching down. I try my best not to itch because supposedly that makes stretch marks even worse. And I have noticed like little dry patches that it's made worse that I've posted on my story before. And they're kind of going away now that I've left them alone. But I will say, um, as of about two or two and a half weeks ago, there has been absolutely no itching. It has subsided. So I don't know if my belly's just done growing for the most part, or the majority of the growing is done. I don't really know, but all I know is that it doesn't itch all day anymore, which has been really nice. Cause I feel like a crazy person out in public, just like, like tapping and tapping, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like it's just been so like itchy, but I haven't had any itching for the past two weeks. 
Kind of right off the bat too, my nipples started to get bigger. Um, I'm the type of person that doesn't notice small changes even on my own body, which is kind of annoying in a lot of ways because some people are just so in tune with their body and they're like, oh, like, oh, I noticed like this and this makes me do this. And I, I, I wish I was more in touch with my body like that, but I'm kind of just not. I, maybe it's because I'm just super busy and I choose not to listen, I don't know. But I did notice my nipples getting bigger. My nipples are probably about double in size. And I showed them to someone like a few weeks ago um, when we were filming our podcast. I, I was talking to Faith, um, who's one of Jenna, Jenna's friends. And she's like, your nipples are still really small. I'm like, dude, you should have seen them before. <laughs> like my nipples were pretty small and they're like double the size now. Something that I noticed, which I thought was kind of weird because I have like a little freckle mole kind of like down there. And it was never like a mole, it was more of a freckle, but I noticed that when I was like cleaning down there, it's more raised and larger. And I noticed that with like all of my like larger kind of like freckle moles, they've all gotten a little bit bigger. And so immediately I started freaking out because I thought the C word, right? So I Googled it and it turns out that your like moles and freckles can actually grow and become larger while you're pregnant, which I thought was really odd and I don't really know what, why, but um, it did make me feel a little bit better, but nonetheless, I do need to schedule a dermatologist appointment to get them checked out. I guess I'm just gonna be in a belly shirt throughout this whole video. I thought the camera wasn't gonna be this low, but as it turns out, it is. So it's just, that's just how it's gonna be today, okay? <laughs> just, just roll with it. Gums bleeding. This has been something that is talked about all over the place in every app. I've seen it in many videos. And I think because I have veneers on the top, it's my, my gums are even more sensitive than the average pregnant ladies. But I will wake up and I'll just have like dried blood on the front of my teeth right here. Or I'll just be smiling or talking and Nick's like your mouth is bloody. So it's been... Uh, annoying to say the least. I definitely have bloody gums and supposedly because you have more blood flowing through your body, I think you have like 50% more flowing through your body when you're pregnant, you tend to also get nosebleeds. And I've only experienced one nosebleed so far and that was like last week. And we had just gotten back from Joshua Tree. So I kind of think that's probably why. Um, one of the beginning symptoms I had as well at is Currently my back is really hurting, so that's why I'm moving around quite a bit, but there's no relief. There's no relief. <laughs> no relief's gonna come this way until she's out. But my sacrum started to really hurt, and I was thinking to myself, maybe by my second child, my sacrum won't hurt, because I just thought maybe it's widening and getting ready for me to like, you know, grow a child. So hopefully my second baby, it's already grown to where it needs to be and it won't hurt. What do you guys think? If you had, if your sacrum hurt in your first pregnancy, did it hurt in your second as well or not? Super curious. And apparently when you get prenatal massages, they're not really allowed to massage around your sacrum, just like they can't really massage around your ankles or cankles as it were right now, uh, <laughs> because it can trigger preterm labor. So they kind of don't, mess with that and all I wanted and still want is someone to like massage the absolute shit out of my sacrum but no 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 so my belly button is disappearing or has already disappeared as you can see Nick was the first one to notice this I have an innie for sure so I was like I'm not gonna be one of those people that have a belly button that like shows through their shirt and pops out. Like that's just not gonna be me. So I, I, I don't really have that right now, but it has pretty much disappeared and feels like when I rub my hand on my belly, it just kind of feels flush. So yeah, sometimes I'm like over a shirt. And I'm like, where the fuck is my belly button? <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's definitely getting pushed way out. So I don't know if it's gonna come out even more, but it kind of has disappeared for the time being. I read and heard that your nipples become like targets for your baby since they can't see super far when they're first born. And for a few months, I think it's three months until their eyesight gets a little bit better. I could be wrong on that, don't quote me. But so I expected my entire nipple as a whole to get darker, but that's actually not what happened so far. So what has happened is there are like little dots of darker brown around my nipples. I love how we have like this bird as our soundtrack right now. The wind blew my door open and there's just some bird like loving life outside right now. So good for you, little buddy. 
My nipples didn't turn darker. It was more so just like sporadic dots around my nipple, like around the areola, I should say, not the nipple, that have gotten darker. So that's what's happened with the nipples getting darker for me. Discharge. So I've talked about this in a couple other videos. I have had a lot of discharge. So that was kind of going on, I would say, in my first trimester, the end of my first trimester, beginning of second, then it kind of stopped and now I'm having lots of discharge again. Uh, so that's definitely been one thing. And the other day, okay, so I wore, this is probably TMI. You guys know me though, I don't give a fuck. So I was wearing the pants to this and this is kind of like a brown pink kind of like look to it. And okay, this is like cutting off my circulation on my wrist. Um, and I was wearing them without underwear and then I went to wipe and it looked like there was like red stuff on the tissue or like it looked more red when it was wet, but it wasn't. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's just the pants that are just all up in my vagina because I haven't washed these. So anyways, don't do that. But the discharge has definitely been more like I can feel it when it comes out, almost like you can feel like the period drop, like when you're on your period and you just feel like a gush of blood. It kind of feels a little bit like that, um, but it's just kind of all the time now. Like I go through probably two pairs of underwear a day, sometimes because I sneeze and I pee, okay? But we're not here to judge. Speaking of discharge, so Nick has told me that, yeah, he actually hasn't gone down there. It's like the beginning of the pregnancy, boo. But um, he told me that I tasted different. And I think I've talked about this with you guys as well in another video, but he said that I tasted different. He thought it was because of the coffee that I drink, but I switched to decaf since I got pregnant. Um, I'll maybe have one non decaf one a week. And today that was that day. But um, yeah, he told me that I taste different. He thought it was the coffee. And I was like, no, dude, my hormones are like all over the place right now. Like I'm growing a child. Like I, I just taste different because of like pregnancy and I Googled it and apparently, apparently it's a thing. And a lot of you told me the same thing. So I felt a little bit better. Back hurting. Now, this is not something everyone experiences because I've talked to a couple people that are friends, a couple people that I know, acquaintances, and they were saying that like their hips hurt and my back hurts in the same spot every single day and every single night. And I go to a prenatal chiropractor once a week. I get prenatal massages almost once a week. I didn't get one this last week, but that was the first time for a while. Um, but, and there's just, almost no relief to it. I can lay like on a round pillow, like when I arch my back like this and lay in the bed and I'll get relief. But as soon as I get up again, it starts hurting. I mean, it's to be expected. I don't know if she's sitting on something that's kind of, or something's kind of tweaked because of the weight that I'm carrying. But, um, I weigh about 168 pounds right now. And I weighed 143 when I was eight weeks pregnant. So I've gained a bit of weight, obviously, and my bot and quickly, um, my body is like not used to it. So overall in the third trimester, I've just experienced more aches and pains than I kind of expected. I also have gained more weight than I wanted to, I think, because I haven't had a kitchen for nine months. As you guys have heard, I'm like a broken fricking record when it comes to that. So it's been um, challenging to say the least, but I just think because of the extra weight, my body and my feet are hurting more. And it's just like, I, and I'm up, I'm up walking around back and forth, back and forth all day, taking care of the pets, getting on the ground, scrubbing this, cleaning out the litter boxes, etc. cetera. Um, you know, giving the rabbits hay, like all that kind of stuff. So I'm definitely uh, putting my body through it. Um, so at the end of the night, it just feels so good to just lay down and decompress. It's so nice. Also a hot shower helps. I did actually take an Epsom salt bath the other night. It didn't help, but it was relaxing. Swollen, okay, so I thought I was gonna be one of those people that didn't get swollen, but as I sit here and speak, I have cankles right now. Like my socks are just, oh my goodness, digging. Oh my gosh. My socks are just, that aren't tight, are digging into my ankles, so. Yikes. So yeah, I have had swollen ankles for the past couple days now, and I don't know when it's gonna go away. I have been walking on my treadmill. I have been drinking tons of water. I've been doing everything I can possibly do to make them not be swollen, but I don't know. They're just swollen. I also had 
swollen um, hands after an eight mile hike. I obviously didn't do this recently, but it was a few, couple, few months ago that we went on a hike and my hands were so swollen. I took off all my rings except this one because I was trying to be prepared for the swelling. So I'm a little disappointed that my ankles are swollen right now, but at the same time, what are you gonna do? Another thing that I didn't know if I was actually gonna experience is a linea negra. I think I'm saying that right. Um, are you putting your paw on my arm right now? <laughs> if you could see on the other side of her head. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys can see it from here, but it's actually not in the center, which is kind of funny. Um, and I didn't think I was gonna get it, but I have a very, very slight one. Some people get it, uh, and it's very dark. It might have something to do with the amount of melanin in your skin. I don't really know, but I have a very, very light one. The last thing that I noticed somewhat, I shouldn't say somewhat early on, I guess I should have stuck this somewhere in the middle, but my eyesight at night is not super great. Um, in addition to my balance, but at night driving, like at dusk and stuff, I almost feel like tipsy. Like I've had a couple drinks or something and I'm just not as sharp and, or it's, or I just feel really tired when I'm driving. So, and so it kind of freaks me out a little bit because I like to be as aware as possible when I'm driving to be safe. But yeah, that's been one thing. And I talked to Brooklyn about that. Um, Brooklyn's who I do the podcast with. And she said that she felt the same exact thing. Like when she was pregnant, like her eyesight at night driving was just like not what it was before. So hopefully that goes back because it's kind of an uneasy feeling, but hey, it is what it is. I think I have hit everything that I've noticed physically uh, as cha you know changes. Um, one thing that I didn't get, which I'm pretty excited that I didn't get, hopefully I still don't get it, is um, I forget what they call it, the pregnancy mask or whatever. I haven't gotten any dark spots on my face at all, but I've also been really, really good about putting on sunscreen. So I'm super stoked on that, but that kind of wraps up all of the physical changes that I've noticed um, up to 33 weeks. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Have you, do you relate to any of these? Have you experienced any that I don't, didn't have on my list? Um, let's chat in the comments below. I'm excited to check it out. So thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.